Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. If it wasn't for Andrew's teachings, I would never be where I am today. I would never have victory. I would be living a life of defeat. It was Andrew's teaching that allowed me to develop that faith. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a series that I started yesterday talking about how to hear God's voice. And I have a CD album on this and also a DVD album that was taken from our television program. And I just started this series yesterday. And basically, what I was doing yesterday was just trying to emphasize how important it is for us to hear God's voice. You know, I don't believe that the Lord really created us to function on our own. Now, He's given us that privilege, and when Adam and Eve chose to disobey God and then go eat of the forbidden fruit and stuff, they started functioning independent of God, and I would say that this is the way that most people live, but I believe that God actually created us to be dependent upon Him. Let me read this verse to you out of Jeremiah chapter 10, and I haven't got time to go through uh, the whole chapter and give you all of this background. But Jeremiah is prophesying that the nation of Israel would go into captivity and they'd be conquered uh, because they had rebelled at God. And so he's pronouncing all of these judgments on them. And in the midst of saying these things, he basically starts saying, how could this happen to the people who were once God's people, who were blessed above all people upon the earth? They were the apple of his eye. How is it that, that problems like this could come into a nation and you could put it on an individual basis. How, how is it that people who God created to experience this, this wonderful world that He's created and to create, to live a glorious life, you know, like Jesus said, that I'm come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. How is it that people that were created for abundance and joy and peace and all of these things can get their lives in such a mess? How is it that this happens? And then he answers his own question. Look at what he says right here in Jeremiah chapter 10 in verse 23. He says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. So as he's saying, how could this happen? How could people get into this situation? How could a nation come to this place? Here's the reason. It's because God did not create us to operate independent of Him. He's given us that choice, and sad to say, most people have made the wrong choice, and they live their own life, and they lean under their own understanding, and they only turn to God when they make a mess out of things, and that is typical, but that's not the way that God intended it to be. It says, the way of man is not in himself. I could say it this way, that you aren't smart enough to run your own life. Man. And I know that that sounds offensive to some people, but you know what? I find great security in the fact that, God, I'm just not, I'm not smart enough to run my own life. The way of man is not in himself to direct his own steps. The right decision is to come to God and say, God, you know, like uh, Solomon, when the Lord appeared unto him in a dream and said, Solomon, what do you want? I'll give you anything you want. He says, God, you've made me the ruler over this, your people, such a great people, and I'm a little child. I don't know how to go out or to come in. Now, he was the king, and he had lived under David, and he had learned a lot, and yet he humbled himself, and he says, I'm not smart enough to run this kingdom. I need you. I ask you for wisdom. And man, that pleased God. That's a godly attitude, and that ought to be the attitude that all of us have, that God, we need you. We need you to direct our steps. See, what I'm trying to impress on us here is that God wants to speak to us. God wants to show you the right way to go. I used these verses yesterday out of Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, that you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk thou in it. In uh, Psalms chapter 32, I'm going to instruct you and guide you in the way you should go, but don't be like a horse or a mule that has to have pain, has to have some kind of a restraint before you will follow what he's saying. He's wanting us just to hear his voice and then respond and be led by him. 
God has a plan for our life. Look at this verse in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Again, if you took this in context, did you know that the verse right in front of this is the verse where he prophesied about the children of Israel going into captivity for 70 years? And this was one of the major prophecies. Daniel uh, interpreted this in the 8th, ninth, 10th chapter of the book of Daniel, and God gave him revelation. And this is one of the major prophecies of the Old Testament, but it was about them being conquered because that nation had turned away from God. And right in the midst of pronouncing this judgment, he comes out, but this is not what I wanted. I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. I think it's the NIV translation that says to give you a hope in a future. And that's good, but I like the way it's stated here in the King James, to give you an expected end. In other words, there's a lot of people that, you know, they hope that when they get older, they will have enough money for retirement. They hope that their health will stay well. They hope that they don't get Alzheimer's and that they are able to function mentally until it's time to go home to be with the Lord. They hope all of these things, but they don't have any confidence. But the Lord says that, no, I, my thoughts towards you are so good that if you would cooperate with me and follow, you can have an expected end. You can say that when it comes time for me to leave this earth and to go to be with the Lord, I don't have to die sick. I don't have to die with dementia. I don't have to die poor. You can have an expected end. God has good plans for you, but it's all dependent upon you being able to hear His voice and follow His leadership. Our problems come when we don't recognize that we are dependent upon Him and we do things our own way. You know, Frank Sinatra sang a song about this. I did it my way. And people think that's good. That's terrible. There is a way that seemeth right unto men, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It says that twice in Scripture. And I can guarantee you, if you are doing things your own way, that's the reason that your life is having problems. That's the reason you don't have the joy and the peace and etc. All of the benefits that God wants us to have. It's because we've done it our own way. God's thoughts towards us are thoughts of peace and not of evil. God has a plan for your life, but He doesn't force you to follow that plan. You have complete freedom to accept or reject it. But God's plans are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You know, this has become a fairly uh, popular passage of Scripture, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, but very few people put it in its context. Look at the next verse. In verse 12, it says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me, and ye shall find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Remember, what I'm talking about is about how to hear God's voice. And one of the very first things that I think is necessary is that you have to seek to hear God's voice and not just seek passively, not just, you know, I've got five minutes before my favorite television program as the stomach turn, uh, turns comes on television. So God, in five minutes, here's five minutes. If you can speak to me and totally change my life in the next five minutes, fine. You aren't going to hear God's voice on a consistent basis like that. It says here that you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search with all of your heart. You have to search for this with all of your heart. Another way of saying this is as long as you can live without hearing God's voice and being directed by Him, you will. As long as you are content to think, well, I'll, I'll do it my way. Me and Frank Sinatra, we'll do it our way. I've got a plan for my life. This is what I want to do. And so you ask God to bless your plans. As long as you can live that way, you won't hear God's voice. God is not going to force it upon you. God is a gentleman. He has to be invited. He has to be sought. You don't, he doesn't force himself upon you. And sad to say, this is why most people don't hear the voice of God is because they aren't seeking with all of their heart. 
I've actually had people come to me before when I was talking to them about the Lord and they'd say, well, I asked the Lord to intervene in my life, but they didn't experience anything right away. And they said, it just didn't work. God didn't respond to me. This says he responds that when you seek him, you find him when you search with all of your heart. It's never God who fails to respond. It's us who fail to seek with all of our heart. God's not going to let you just do your own thing, get into problems and make a mess of your life. And then when all of a sudden you run into this wall and things aren't working, you say, oh God, what should I do? And he tells you and you take that to get out of that problem. But then you go right back into the same mindset to where you're just running your own life, doing your own thing, and you wait until the next problem. If God was to just bail you out every time you got into trouble and just answer your, you know, your question, your, what do I do here? And he, and if he did that for you, and then you went right back into your way, in a sense, he would be subsidizing your lifestyle. He would be uh, promoting it. He would be allowing it. He would be an enabler. No, the Lord isn't going to wait until you just get into trouble and call out, and then he'll bail you out. You need to seek with all of your heart. It doesn't need to be just, God, get me out of this problem so that I can go back to living the way I was before that got me into this problem in the first place. You need to get to where you seek with all of your heart, not just asking for deliverance from a little momentary situation, a momentary problem that you've got, but it needs to be a lifestyle. It needs, needs to be seeking Him with all of your heart. If you put this together with Matthew chapter 7, and in verse 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And then in verse 8, it says, For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. In other words, he's, this is a promise that if you seek, and put this together with uh, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13, when you seek with all of your heart, then you find. When you ask with all of your heart, then you receive. When you knock with all of your heart, then the door is opened unto you. So I'm applying all of this to how to hear God's voice. You have to desire it. You have to seek it. It has to be a focus. As long as you are doing your own thing and you are content to do your own thing and you can live without hearing God's voice, then you will. But when you get to a place that you say, this is something that I desire more than anything else. And when you seek with all of your heart, then you'll find. So the very first thing, I know some of you are wanting me to move on. All right, give me specifics, how to do this and that. I'm going to get into some specifics and share some things with you that have just revolutionized my life. But I, it would be useless for me to share these things with you if your heart isn't right. God speaks to us heart to heart not head to head. And if your heart is wrong, if you're doing your own thing, if you are self-confident, self-promoting, if, if God's wanting you to go this way, but man, you're wanting to go the opposite direction and you are just wanting to use God and have God finance it and approve of it, approve of your plans, you're going to miss God. You're, you aren't going to effectively hear God's voice. You need to humble yourself. You need to come to a place to where you say, God, just like in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, it's not in man to direct his own steps. I'm not smart enough to run my own life. God, I need you. I want you to speak to me. Just like Solomon said, I'm a child. I don't know how to go out and come in. He was the mightiest man in the nation, and yet he says, I don't know how to run this on my own. I need your help. Man, that's a godly place to be. You know, I've, I've shared this story before, but right before my mother died, she died in 2009. She was 96 years old. And right before she died, she was asking me to tell her again about what the Lord had done and about the ministry. She was a big supporter of the ministry. She worked for us and opened our mail for probably 15 or 20 years. And she just loved what God was doing through the ministry. And so I was telling her and I was telling her about uh, all of the foreign ministry and the offices that we had and things. And she was blessed by it, but she looked right at me. And I mean, she was getting frail at this time. And she stuck her little bony finger right in my face. And she said, Andy, you know this is God doing this. And I said, yes, ma'am, I know it's God. And then she 
stuck her finger in my face and she says, you aren't smart enough to do this. And boy, I tell you, there's nothing like your mother to put you in your place. But I agreed 100% and I, I admitted, I said, it's absolutely true. You know, I could spend a long time telling you about what God has done in my life and how He's blessed me and how He's enabled me to impact other people and other people's lives are being changed. It's just awesome. And I am not smart enough to do this. I'm telling you, I didn't, uh, I didn't see exactly where we are today. I didn't see this in the past. I knew that God was... I had a vague picture of what God was going to do, but the details of it, I didn't know how to do this stuff. It's not my wisdom. You know, I was just with some people yesterday and I was encouraging them in some things and I said, you guys are more talented than I am. You have more skill in administration and things in what I do. And I said, because of that, it's easier for you to depend upon yourself. But I told them, I said, man, I just don't have... I don't have the business sense. I don't have the administration skills that it takes to run a ministry like ours, where we have 650 employees and, and offices all over the world. I think we have 16 or 17 offices and hundreds of people overseas that we employ. I'm not smart enough to run this thing. But you know what? I can hear God's voice and God speaks to me, and God has brought people to me, and I've put people in positions of authority who do have the skills that I don't have. And I mean, God will just make you look good. I'm telling you, I mean, I'm speaking to some people. I just know in my heart that God is speaking to people right now who you know that there is more for you than what you're experiencing. You know that what's happening in your life is not God's will and yet you don't know how to get out of the situation you're in. You don't know how you got into the situation. It just seems like you are at a loss what to do. What I'm sharing with you, how to hear God's voice is a big part of your answer. God right now knows how to get you out of the situation you're in and into His perfect will. But you're going to have to follow His direction. First of all, you're going to have to hear what He has to say. You need to quit trying to get God to bless your plans. And you need to throw your plans away. And you need to say, God, what are your plans for my life? What do you want me to do? And then you need to hear from God and you need to respond and follow God. I can promise you, if your life is in a mess, it's because you did it your way. The only exception I could see to that is if you're following God and the problems that you're having are persecution. They aren't self-made. They're uh, Satan attacking you. And it is true that all those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Second Timothy chapter 3 uh, says that. And so you could be persecuted, but most of the things that we deal with, it's not persecution. It's not even demonic. Of course, Satan might have been involved in tempting us with something, and so we chose to follow his direction. But most of our problems are self-created. It's because we did things our own way, because we didn't follow the will of God. So I'm telling you, hearing God's voice is absolutely essential. And the point I'm trying to get across today is that you have to seek with all of your heart the first step in hearing God's voice is you have to know that it's possible, and you have to seek it. You have to desire it. If you pursue hearing the voice of God, you will. If you don't pursue it, you won't. It's that simple. And so literally, you can determine whether or not you hear God's voice by just seeking with all of your heart. And when you do, God will begin to reveal Himself to you. Now, I'm going to share some things with you that God has taught me over 53 years of ministry and these things that I'm going to share with you will help you. And I, I believe that you will bear witness immediately and this will help you to gain confidence that this is God speaking to me. And I believe it'll be a help. But all of it is to no avail if you, first of all, don't have the right attitude in your heart, if your heart isn't right. If you aren't seeking with all of your heart, it's not going to work for you. So the very first step is that you've got to seek and you shall find. You got to ask and then you'll receive. You got to knock and then the door will be opened unto you. And I tell you, many of us have just adjusted 
TO NOT BEING LED BY GOD, TO DOING THINGS OUR OWN WAY. THAT'S THE WAY IT WAS MODELED TO US BY OUR PARENTS. THAT'S THE WAY IT'S BEING MODELED IN OUR SOCIETY. AND SAD TO SAY, EVEN IN THE CHURCH TODAY, THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT ARE JUST DOING THEIR OWN THING. THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT'LL SEE SOMEBODY ELSE WHO'S SUCCESSFUL, AND THEN THEY'LL JUST GO AND TRY AND MIMIC THEM. THEY WILL GO TO THESE CONFERENCES AND THEY'LL JUST TAKE WHAT THEY'VE DONE, AND THEN THEY'RE GOING TO FOLLOW THAT. AND I'M TELLING YOU, EVEN THOUGH YOU CAN GAIN WISDOM AND MAYBE YOU CAN BE INSPIRED IN SOME WAYS BY OTHER PEOPLE, YOU NEED TO HEAR GOD'S VOICE FOR YOU PERSONALLY. YOU'RE AN INDIVIDUAL. GOD WILL SPEAK TO YOU DIFFERENTLY AND LEAD YOU DIFFERENTLY THAN OTHER PEOPLE. YOU KNOW, IF I HAD TIME, I COULD GIVE YOU EXAMPLES IN MY LIFE OF THINGS THAT GOD HAS LED ME TO DO THAT HE HASN'T LED OTHER PEOPLE TO DO BECAUSE IT'S ME, IT'S NOT THEM. AND I'VE JUST GOTTEN USED TO THIS. I'VE GOT... I DON'T SIT HERE AND TRY AND MIMIC OTHER PEOPLE. I'M WHO GOD MADE ME TO BE. I'M NOT PERFECT IN THIS AREA. I HADN'T ARRIVED, BUT I'VE LEFT, AND I'VE JUST GOTTEN CONFIDENT THAT I'M DOING WHAT GOD HAS TOLD ME TO DO. AND OTHER PEOPLE, I DON'T JUDGE THEM. THEY CAN DO WHATEVER GOD TELLS THEM TO DO. BUT I TELL YOU, WE MAKE A MISTAKE JUST TRYING TO, YOU KNOW, BE A COOKIE CUTTER AND and FOLLOW WHAT EVERYBODY ELSE HAS DONE AND MODEL OUR LIFE AFTER EVERYBODY ELSE. GOD HAS A UNIQUE PLAN FOR YOU. AND ACCORDING TO THESE VERSES THAT I WAS USING TODAY, JEREMIAH CHAPTER 29, VERSE 11, THEY'RE THOUGHTS OF PEACE. It's, uh, IT'S NOT EVIL. AND IT'S SO THAT YOU CAN HAVE AN EXPECTED END, SO THAT YOU CAN FINISH YOUR COURSE WITH JOY. NOT ONLY START, BUT FINISH. GOD WANTS TO GUIDE YOU. HE WANTS TO SPEAK TO YOU. THERE NEEDS TO BE A VOICE THAT YOU HEAR SAYING, THIS IS THE WAY, WALK THOU IN IT. AND IF YOU CAN HEAR GOD'S VOICE AND LEARN TO RESPOND TO IT, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU GOD'S PLANS FOR YOU ARE NOTHING BUT GOOD. AND HE WILL LEAD YOU TO A PLACE THAT I GUARANTEE YOU IT WILL BE A BLESSING TO YOU. MANY OF YOU AREN'T IN THAT PLACE RIGHT NOW, BUT YOU CAN BE, AND THAT'S WHAT THIS WHOLE TEACHING IS ABOUT. LET ME ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THIS TEACHING. THIS IS A DVD SET THAT WAS TAKEN FROM MY TELEVISION PROGRAMS. THIS IS A CD SET. I HAVE BOTH OF THESE DIFFERENT um, FORMATS AVAILABLE FOR YOU TO BE ABLE TO GET IT. IF YOU'LL LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER, HE'LL GIVE YOU MORE INFORMATION ABOUT HOW YOU CAN RECEIVE THIS TEACHING ON HOW TO HEAR GOD'S VOICE. AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GO TO THE EFFORT OF REQUESTING THIS MATERIAL. I PROMISE YOU IT WOULD BE A BLESSING TO YOU. THEN JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW FOR THE GOSPEL TRUTH. Andrew's complete teaching, How to Hear God's Voice, is available as a CD or DVD album for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. IF YOU HAVEN'T YET PARTNERED WITH US, I'D LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO PRAY ABOUT IT, AND THEN IF THE LORD SAYS SO, JOIN WITH US, BECAUSE WE ARE TAKING THE GOSPEL NOT ONLY THROUGH TELEVISION, BUT WE'VE GOT OVER 70 uh, DIFFERENT LOCATIONS AROUND THE WORLD, OFFICES, I THINK IN 16 DIFFERENT NATIONS. Uh, WE HAVE uh, PROBABLY 8,000 STUDENTS GOING THROUGH Karis BIBLE COLLEGE AT ANY TIME WITH OVER 8,000 GRADUATES. WE'RE PUMPING OUT MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF FREE MATERIAL THROUGH OUR WEBSITE, OVER 200,000 FREE HOURS OF MATERIAL ON OUR WEBSITE, AND WE'RE JUST REACHING ALL AROUND THE WORLD. WE COULDN'T DO IT WITHOUT PARTNERS. AND SO I WOULD LIKE TO ASK YOU TO PRAY ABOUT IT. IF YOU WANT TO MAKE A DIFFERENCE, I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS A GOOD MINISTRY. YOU'LL GET A GREAT RETURN, NOT ONLY IN HEAVEN, BUT IN THIS LIFE, YOU'LL RECEIVE A HUNDREDFOLD. SO JOIN WITH US AND BECOME A PARTNER WITH ANDREW WOMACK MINISTRIES TODAY. If God is with us,
us? Who can be against us? We are not alone. He will help us to face Nero. Let him among you who is without sin. Let him throw the first stone. All persons suspected of following the religious sect known as Christianity will be thrown to the lions. Keras Hybrid is a unique blend of independent study and face-to-face -face time with instructors and with other students who are determined to go deeper with God. You'll study courses at home, but then join your fellow classmates in person. I love the new hybrid program. I think it's excellent because as a full-time working person, it just makes my schedule more available. Keras offers weeknight and Saturday classes to accommodate your work schedule. Most people have to work every day, all day long, and this would definitely make it a lot easier for them to be able to come up here. It's nice to come home and change into my pajamas and crawl in bed and <laughs> watch my videos, you know. I highly recommend the hybrid program. I think it's, it's fantastic and it'll accommodate many, many schedules. Keras Hybrid adapts to your busy lifestyle and allows you to experience the best of both Keras online and on campus. Learn more at kerasbiblecollege.org forward slash hybrid. Do you want to connect with like-minded believers? Then Karis Bible Studies is the place for you. Find a Bible study near you by visiting karisbiblestudies.net. Welcome to the AWM Minute, a quick look at how the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries are helping us bring healing to people all around the world. People like Colleen Ian Marino. For years, Colleen struggled with crippling pain and nerve damage in her back. That is, until her daughter introduced her to Andrew's teachings. When I started hearing some of the things that he was saying, that it's not what you do that allows God to love you. It's who he is. This determination started coming up on the inside of me. Get up. You don't have to stay where you are. Eager to hear more about God's unconditional love and grace, Colleen and her husband enrolled into Karis Bible College. It was here, sitting under the Word of God, that she was able to walk out her complete healing. To watch her full story, visit awmi.net today. I want to let you know that we have now started a Karis Daily live Bible study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week. We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule, and it's going to really be good. We're going to use our instructors from the school, and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis daily live Bible study five days a week.